Well hello Internet and welcome to part 22 of my how to make Android app tutorial. Today we're going to cover how to send and receive text messages. So there's a lot to do. Why don't we jump over first and see what the finished product is going to look like. Alright so the very first thing I'm going to do is show you how to set your texting app as the default texting app. Just go into settings and more and then default SMS app and click on that and then pick it. Mine's texting or at least that's what I called it. And here you can see the basic layout of the app. Very simple. It's an editable text box. A whole bunch of editable text boxes. And here I'm going to type in a little message that I want to send. And of course I have to type in a phone number but I'm not going to show you that. And over on my wife's phone, you're going to see that the message shows up. And if she then would go in and type a message back to me, I'm just going to type in nothing just to keep this very simple. And then I'm going to send it. And you're going to see that it's going to pop up back on my phone. So let's jump into the code and create this thing. Okay, so you saw the finished application. Very simple, just like all the time, so it'll be very easy for you to implement. Now, what I'm in right now is the Android Manifest.xml file. Now, as you saw, I showed you how to set your application as the default texting app because that's required ever since Android KitKat came out. What I'm going to show you here is how you have to set up your Android Manifest file because it is extremely specific so that you'll be able to make your application the default texting app. And I went ahead and just did this ahead of time. Of course, all this code is available in the link in the description. What you're going to need to do is get permission to send your text messages, get permission to receive them, and read them. Then, as we scroll down inside of here, you're going to see all of these different actions and categories you're going to have to define inside of the main activity right here. And this is all going to be copy and paste type of stuff. You're always going to use the same thing. You definitely don't have to try to memorize that. That would just be silly. Then down here, we're going to define all of our broadcast receivers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these up as static inner classes inside of main activity. And if you want to refer to a static inner class, you would just type in whatever your main class is, followed by a dollar sign, and then follow it by whatever the inner class's name is. Now this guy is is going to be receiving all of the text messages for your application. Down here we're going to also set it up so we'll be able to receive different types of media in the text message. I'm not going to do that in this part of the tutorial though. However you must set this up whether you're going to be receiving this data or not for your text messaging app to show up as the default text editing tool. And then we're also going to use this headless SMS service here. This also must be set up and that is going to handle whenever you have a pre-written message or whatever that is going to be sent out whenever a call is rejected. So that's what those different things do. And like I said, just copy and paste this stuff into your Android manifest file and you'll be ready to go. Now let's jump over into Activity Main. You already saw the application. It's very simple. It just has an editable text box up here. This line is going to handle the phone number. This is going to send the message and this is where the message is going to go. Nothing terribly fancy here. You can see everything right there and how that's set up. See right here we're going to have to create a method that is going to handle whenever this button is clicked on. And we could just come in here right now and have that created over in Main Activity. And there it is. And you can see that nothing else here is particularly that crazy or complex and we're just going to now jump over into main activity and start writing all the code we need to send and receive text messages. Okay, so here we are over in the main activity section and I just need to set it up so that our components will be available to us. And there we have those all set up. Next we need to also, we're going to be using a static inner class and so that we will be able to pass information back and forth between the main activity and that static inner class, what we're going to do here is create a a static string and it is going to hold a list of all the messages both that we send as well as the user sends back to us. Then we're going to also create a handler and what this is going to allow us to do is to update the UI or the editable text window whenever any new messages are sent to our application and the version we want to use is the android.os version of the handler and basically what this handler is going to do is schedule for our code to execute at a set point in time in this activity's thread meaning the main activity and we're going to set it up so that it's going to auto update the editable text window let's say every five seconds next we need to come in here and initialize all of the different components that we're going to be using. And we're going to do that in exactly the same way that we always do it with find view by ID. And there we go, everything's been initialized. 
Now if we want to be able to update the editable text box every five seconds, what we're going to do in this situation, I'm going to use a thread just as an example of how to use threads. This works good enough. And we would go runnable. And that's going to create everything for us. And then inside of the run area, we're going to say while true, which means it's going to run for a while here, of course. We're going to say try and then thread sleep 5000, which is going to make this sleep for five seconds. And then we're going to go call our handler and post new runnable. And again, we're going to put another run inside of this. And then inside of here, we're just going to call the editable text box, that guy right there. And then just every five seconds, we're going to update that with whatever information is stored in our messages variable above. Messages is this guy right here. And let's call it messages because messages makes more sense than message. And whenever we get this, it's going to say we need to add some catch clauses, make that error go away, and then of course put a semicolon here. And then the final thing we need to do is go down here and call start for this thread to execute. All right, so that's going to handle updating everything every five seconds. Nice and neat, pretty easy to set up and understand. Now we'll get down into the send message part. It's very easy to send text messages. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get the phone number that they provided in the other editable text box in our application. There that is. And of course, just go get text and then to string. And there that is. Now we're going to also get the message that they want to send. And there that is. Get text again and then to string. Okay, so we have our telephone number we want to send our message to and our message. We're going to be doing some funky things. We're going to need a try block here. Then we're going to have to create an SMS manager. And this is going to handle sending and receiving data and text for us. Just call it SMS manager. And to get this guy, we're going to call get default. There you go. Code writes itself. Then we're going to go SMS manager again. And we're going to say send text message. Doesn't get much easier than that. First thing we're going to do is provide the phone number that we want to send to. Then this second part, I'm going to mark this as null. This would be for our service center address, which we're going to ignore. And then the next thing we want to do is put in the message that we want to send. And then if this wasn't marked as null, this would broadcast whenever the message was successfully sent. And if this wasn't marked as null, this would broadcast whenever a successful delivery was sent. And we could come in here and put a toast of some type, make text, and say something like message sent. There we go, and show. And the catch clause here that we want to handle is going to be if they did not provide a telephone number or data or whatever. And that guy is known as illegal argument exception. And we could make another text, and we could say something like enter a phone number and message. And then show, of course. There we go. We could also print out stack trace, of course. There we go. And then, of course, the only other thing we want to do is update the messages so that we'll be able to display them in the editable text box. And I could say you, just to keep that simple, and message with a break. And that's all we need to do there. Or actually, let's get that out of there and put this after here. Don't want to put it in the catch clause. There we go. And then this is going to close that guy off. Next thing we're going to do is set up the broadcast receiver to be able to receive text messages. And like I said before, I'm going to make this static class, call this SMS receiver. And this is going to extend our broadcast receiver, which we've talked about a lot in the last couple tutorials. And of course, this is going to want some methods implemented. So implement those methods. Click OK. And there we go. There's on receive. We're going to set up another SMS manager, just like before. It's going to allow us to send and receive data and text. Call get default. We're also going to, for the Android manifest, going to have to set up a blank constructor for this guy. There that is. And then we'll go into on receive and decide what we're going to do whenever a new message is received. Information is going to be sent as a bundle. So let's go bundle and then call intent get extras. And like always, throw this in a try block. We want to first check if we received any data. So we can say bundle not equal to null. Then we can do some things. Then we want to store the data sent as a PDU or a protocol data unit. And that just means it's going to include both the number and the text and other such things. And let's just create an object array here. And let's call this PDUS object for PDU, protocol data unit, like I said before. Change that to P. And then let's cast this object array and then go bundle git and then pass inside of this PDUS. Now we want to cycle through the data that we received. So let's just create an integer. Well, this is greater than PDUS 
object and get the length, the number of different items we got there. Increment i. Then we're going to create an SMS message object from our raw PDU data. And let's go in here, make sure we get this guy. There it is. There we go. And we'll say create from PDU. Cast this to a byte array and throw i in there to increment through that. Now if we want to come in here and get the telephone number that sent us the message, just store this inside of a string and let's call this phone number. We just call SMS message and get display originating address, that guy right there. And that's gonna get us our telephone number. And then of course, we're also gonna to wanna to get our message, SMS message dot get display message body. And that's gonna have our text message. Now I didn't do this in the app whenever I first showed it because I didn't want you to see the telephone number I was sending, but if you wanted to be able to update messages with the telephone number, we just go messages plus and if we want to get our phone number, of course, we just type in phone number. And then if we want to also display our message, let's put message in there. And then we want to also put in a new line. And there that is. And then we want to get down into our try block area here. And let's just do a generic catch. There we go. Just do log message, SMS receiver. And just say exception SMS receiver. So we'll be able to figure out what happened there. And that's all we need to do to be able to receive the text messages. And the only other thing, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to get into it right now. Want to also be able to handle multimedia messages. And whether you're doing this or not, remember, if you want to actually have your app be available as the default text messaging app, you have to have this in here, whether you're utilizing it or not. So I'm just going to go public class, MMS receiver. And this is going to extend the broadcast receiver just like before. And then we're going to have to implement some methods here. Implement methods. And that's going to be on receive just like previously. And there it is. And then we could just come in here and say that this is unsupported. Everything will still work whether you have this all set up or not. There it is. And we could do something like not implemented yet. Then you're basically going to have to do a same exact thing for the headless SMS service. And like I said before, this is going to handle whenever you want to send a pre-written message whenever a call is rejected. I'm just going to paste this in here again. And I'll just call this headless SMS send service. This is also going to be a broadcast receiver. And then you're also going to want to come in here and set up blank constructors for these guys. That's all you need to do. And then do the same thing for this class. And then the final thing we need to do is remove callbacks for our anonymous runnables. And how we're going to do this is just come in here and go to generate and then override methods. And then we'll go into on destroy. And then right here, we'll put in our handler dot remove callbacks and messages. And then inside of here, we'll just type in null and that'll kill everything. And there you go, guys. That is how you're going to be able to send and receive text messages inside of Android. And all of the code is available in a link in the description. And please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.